it's a uh, java.lang package. So most of uh, the classes, most used classes in java.lang packages we will try to cover. And uh, as uh, most of uh, these classes are just API references, uh, I will see how much, uh, how many methods, uh, simple methods we'll try to do it and then uh, we will uh, try to complete this uh, session, okay? So these methods are not so difficult. Uh, like uh, we did the uh, first uh, java.lang.string and uh, string buffer and the string builder classes, okay? So last class we had the strings. So, so uh, let us start with java.lang package. So this is the package which uh, gets automatically imported into all our programs because all, most of the classes and interfaces that, uh, that are uh, in java.lang package are uh, widely used and uh, they are uh, they form the fundamental of uh, any java program okay that is why we need not have to explicitly import uh, this particular package they are available to the user uh, implicitly that is you need not have to explicitly import it they are automatically imported to all the programs okay this is uh, one of the widely used uh, packages in uh, java so let's get started with the primitive types we've already seen uh, what are these primitive types for every primitive uh, uh, data type that we have in Java, we have a uh, wrapper classes, corresponding wrapper classes, okay? So, those, uh, we are using those corresponding uh, wrapper classes, uh, we can convert any primitive data type into object, and uh, which are the method that requires an object representation of a particular primitive data type, right? Uh, to those methods, we can uh, pass those uh, well, is object representation of a particular uh, primitive type. Uh, from Java 5, all these things uh, are taken care by what is known as uh, uh, auto boxing and uh, auto unboxing. Okay, and the root of uh, uh, num uh, the root of all the numeric uh, data types that is your uh, int, short, byte, long, float, double. Uh, there is an abstract class called number there's an abstract class called number, okay? So all numeric uh, data types, uh, numeric data types extend the, from this abstract class and implement uh, uh, some of the common methods. Okay, let us see what are those common methods. So this is the hierarchy of uh, number class. So here we have uh, the abstract class. Here we have the abstract class. This is remember, this is an abstract class. Okay. So for each uh, numeric, we have a corresponding uh, data type. Okay. And uh, the reason for using that is uh, uh, corresponding. Uh, object representation of uh, these classes is uh, like uh, say for example you have a method we have already discussed all these things just to refresh okay uh, which takes only methods but that takes uh, uh, the number if you want to pass a number to the particular method you uh, wrap that uh, primitive data type into a number number object and then pass it to that particular method so all these method all these uh, classes define uh, some constants okay static constants uh, which are uh, your min value, max value. Uh, they they define uh, the minimum value and maximum value of a particular data type. So if you want to use those things, you can uh, use constants. They define constants. So if you want to use those things, you can use, uh, uh, in those situations, you can use these uh, objects. So if you want to convert, uh, this is uh, not valid as of now because everything is taken care of uh, by auto boxing and uh, unboxing. Okay, that is uh, to convert from uh, a primitive types to object, objects to primitive. That is uh, streamlined and it is uh, available within the Java itself. Okay. So most of the methods uh, that are implemented by subclasses of uh, number are uh, uh, to get, you see for each data type, you have a, a data type, x, 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 value, value method, okay. 
this represents your byte, short, int, long, float, or double. Okay, so these uh, methods give you the primitive data type representation from the object number object. Okay, for each data type, we have uh, x value method. Okay, x value method. All these methods are defined in your uh, uh, number class. So they, all those things will be implemented by all the subclasses of the number. That is the byte, short, int, long, float, and double. Okay. To get corresponding primitive value of a number object. So apart from that, we have compared to methods. So which compares two objects, number objects, arguments, and the one which is invoking. Okay. So, and we all know we have seen uh, multiple times that how compared to work, uh, positive number, zero, and negative number. Okay, based on that one, uh, in, uh, uh, we can conclude whether uh, the invoking object is greater than the uh, invoked object or the argument that is passed to the method. And if both are equal, the result will be zero. The return type is integer. Okay, so I am assuming like. Uh, like all these methods are very simple. So it will be like if I try to explain all these things more, it will be boring also. That is why I am kind of like, uh, uh, I mean, just run through that, walk through these methods, okay? So there are few couple of simple examples. So other things you can refer to the APIs and try those uh, uh, methods, okay? In your uh, simple programs. So let us start with the, the integer class. Uh, uh, we have a, a few methods in integer class. These are uh, similar to any other data type. For example, you have a double, uh, let us take double class. Okay, notice that all these things are static methods. Okay, without instantiating any object of this integer, you can call these uh, methods. Okay, say for example, if you want to call decode, you can call integer dot decode, okay, these are all utility methods. Okay, so decode method, it uh, converts a string into its uh, equivalent uh, integer. Okay, for example, say you have uh, any optional number, if you want to convert it in, uh, into decimal number, you can use this. So say for example, you have an optional number uh, 0 10 as string. Okay, so that will be converted into equivalent decimal number by this particular uh, method. Or if you have x a number, say for example f. Okay, so this this is a string that is what we are passing uh, the argument to this particular method. This will give the equivalent of decimal equivalent of uh, decimal equivalent for us. Okay, it decodes uh, the number based on uh, how that is uh, kind of like whether it is a extra decimal number or octal number or uh, decimal number itself. So if you want to specify decimal number 10, don't uh, pre prefix with the 0 or uh, 0x, then it will be decimal number only. So decimal equivalent of so decimal number itself, we will get it, okay? That is integer uh, object of the string uh, string object, okay? That is what this particular uh, decode method does. But there is no way like uh, we can specify uh, binary number in string and get decimal equivalent of uh, that one okay with this it supports only hex uh, octal and the decimal okay so here we have parsing so similar to integer we have decode method for double as well okay that simply returns double object of string representation of uh, uh, double number okay so we have pass int we are passing a string object to that so this will parse the string say for example you have 10 okay you have 10 so it will parse the string and gives this value that is 10 so this throws number format exception this also will throw number format exception number format exception, okay? For example, if you have a string by name 10, 
okay this will not be converted into 10 and uh, the value will not be returned okay this is a string okay so when you try to pass a such string pass it will return number format exception pass will return number format exception okay so the string which contains at, uh, correct numbers for example 10 okay 20 30 okay those kinds of numbers will be uh, passed and corresponding value will be returned otherwise this kind of uh, things it will not convert into 10 and it will not return it will throw number format exception okay already we have seen uh, two string methods and value of methods also okay if you pass uh, uh, to this particular method if you pass a primitive type it will give a string representation of that particular value and this will give object representation of your primitive type okay let us say a simple example these are all not uh, so difficult methods that's why uh, not uh, i mean uh, i'm just uh, walking through these methods okay okay so here we have an octal number because it starts with zero okay so when you try to print the value octal i mean decimal equivalent of this one i mean when you try to print this decode will give us the decimal equivalent of this octal number okay here we have x number we will print the decimal equivalent and then here we have decimal number itself which is the decimal equivalent of the same number okay also uh, like we have seen in our previous classes uh, we can convert an integer into uh, respect to x number or binary string okay uh, we have method to convert from uh, integer to binary but the other way we don't have it you have to write your own program okay so uh, all these uh, classes will define max and min value for integer uh, it will this will give you uh, number of this particular method will give you bit count of maximum value and bit count of minimum value so this will display your maximum value and minimum value for an integer object okay so let us run this program and see okay so this is the maximum value and this is the minimum value that is allowed for integers so decimal equivalent of 10 is octal 10 is 8 okay so 10 means 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay uh, 0 1 6 0 to 7 is your uh, numbers and uh, once you reach 8 it will be 10 in the octal right that is what it is uh, done here okay and uh, hexadecimal equivalent this is 32 because uh, 10 is like uh, you have uh, uh, 15 after 15 that is your uh, f right that is what is your uh, uh, 0 to 10 uh, 0 to 9 a b c d e f that is 15 right so this is your 32 and then uh, the value of uh, 23 is it is less the decimal equivalent as 23 only and uh, sorry here i should have mentioned 23 okay so 23 equivalent of 23 is 23 uh, this is binary equivalent okay so it displays uh, 10 because if you see 0 1 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 is uh, your 2 okay that is your uh, binary equivalent so this is your 10 uh, is your binary equivalent okay And then uh, we are converting 15 into uh, hex string, hex uh, decimal number. So uh, 15 is our f, 0 to 9 and uh, uh, a to f, okay. 15th number is our uh, this one. So that is why this one is uh, f, okay. And then we have string 23. It is passed into integer 
okay that is integer i has 23 now we are trying to print the value uh, here the octal equivalent okay okay so here we have specified uh, there are two versions of uh, parsing one uh, one is just you can specify the uh, string other one you can specify radix okay where uh, the allowed radix are uh, 10 16 and 8 okay whatever the thing that you specify here this is for optimal 16 is for hexadecimal and then 10 is for your uh, decimal okay so equivalent of that one will be the number that you pass here the, the equivalent of uh, whatever the radix that you pass here that will be uh, given to you okay that will be returned where so this uh, this particular method bit count number of bits it will count the number of bits and uh, it will display okay number of bits that is that is taken by uh, the whole integer okay maximum number so here are the your uh, maximum and minimum values for integer okay similarly we have uh, all these things are the static methods as i mentioned so for double you have double dot decode you can pass string integer dot decode or double dot decode uh, double dot uh, two binary string double dot two hex string double dot parse string double dot parse int okay you can see those things in uh, api reference itself Hope all of you can see my screen. Java.lang. These are all uh, our interfaces. Okay. And uh, this is our runnable. So we will discuss about runnable interface uh, when we discuss about threads. Okay. So I just wanted to cover uh, these packages first and then we will go to threads. Okay. So next we will go to IO package that is input output package. And then uh, we will cover the uh, utility package. That's a little bigger one. And then we will cover uh, the threads, OK? So if you see here, so you have all these uh, fields, OK? So negative infinity, NAND, size, which is the number of uh, bits used and then maximum uh, exponent value maximum value that you can use uh, min value and not a number all these things okay and then corresponding methods we have byte value so we have seen uh, at the start we have seen right byte value int value for all these things uh, byte value int value all these things will be there okay a respective equivalent and then value of two string two hex string short value pass double Okay, for integers it is a pass integer. Okay, pass int. Here it is pass double, long value. So, so corresponding uh, for the respective data types, we have uh, uh, corresponding uh, methods like for pass int for integer, pass double for uh, double, and uh, pass short for short, byte, all those things. Okay. So max value, min value byte value which are the methods that we discussed at the beginning that is the value uh, those things those things will be common to all these things okay but parse byte here we have parse byte okay and then the float value all those things and then we have float okay parse float to x string to string and others okay you can refer to this particular uh, api uh, to understand uh, better and try using those uh, apis okay like uh, how i've used it okay let's move on so for these things most commonly used uh, constructors are 
byte and string. If you see, uh, each constructor has uh, each constructor takes one uh, primitive type and uh, other will take uh, the string uh, object. Okay, so to create respective constructors. So, so here now, uh, if at all you want to create uh, some uh, string object or byte object or integer object from string, you can use these constructors. Otherwise, these things are not needed because uh, auto boxing and unboxing will take care of these things, right? Uh, anyone has any questions? Yes, anyone has any doubts? So as I mentioned, these are all very simple. Uh, okay, so let's move on to character class. Uh, so this is the constructor that we can use for character class. So char val as uh, with respect to other uh, uh, data types like a byte, byte val, byte value, int value. This is our char value. So there are different uh, methods through which we can kind of like uh, see whether that is a particular character is a uh, uh, digit. Okay, this method will, all these methods will return uh, true or false. Okay, use uh, digit. Use digit will return true if the uh, character passed as argument is a digit. Okay. So next one is use letters. This one use letter, it checks whether it's a letter. Uh, use letter or digit, it checks whether uh, the character is past character is a specified character is integer or I mean letter or a digit. Sorry, I missed the I here. And then the lower case, is lower case, is upper case. As, the, as I mentioned, the intuitive, all these methods are intuitive. So you can just by reading those uh, methods, you will be able to identify what uh, exactly is the functionality of all these methods, okay? Is white space, is two upper case and two lower case. These two uh, convert the specified character into upper case and lower case. Uh, this will check white space. This will check whether the character is a upper case character or lower case character, okay? So let's see an example. So I have this uh, particular uh, string. So I'm reading each and every character from this particular string. And I'll check whether the, uh, that's a letter. If it is a letter, I'll check whether it's a uppercase character or lowercase character. Just for showing how to use these methods, okay? Nothing uh, big logic and all. Just to show whether this, uh, how to use uh, these methods. Okay, and then uh, if it is a digit, I'll just print it as a digit. And then if it is a white space, white space. If all these things are not satisfied, I'll just print, uh, uh, can't determine the uh, character, okay? So let me run this. So you'll be able to see like uh, J is uppercase character, A, all these things are lowercase character. And there is a space between Java and the eight uh, that is listed as uh, white space, okay? Eight is a digit dot is we cannot determine dot and then zero zero is a digit okay so that is what uh, that's how you can uh, do it within a for loop okay so let's move on to uh, uh, the important uh, one of the important class that is process okay it encapsulates an executing program okay this is an abstract class, so we cannot create an instance of this particular class. Okay. So this is a super class for objects created by uh, the methods. This is the method in your runtime class and start is a method in your process builder class. That's a process builder class. So what are the object? The, uh, EXEC execute method from runtime. Uh, this method will return a process object which you can capture in this object, okay, using this one. The start also will return an object which is uh, of type process, okay. So these are all ab abstract methods which are uh, defined by this uh, particular process. So you can use these methods on whatever the objects written by e execute and the uh, start methods, okay. So destroy method, it terminates the program. 
exit value it returns uh, the exit value of uh, whenever a process is running and it when when once it uh, completes it returns a particular uh, value okay if it is zero the exit value is zero it uh, terminated uh, normally if it is more better um, uh, other than zero it is like some uh, some issues there so it is abnormal termination of a particular uh, process okay so that value will be written by this particular exit value uh, method so get error stream and uh, get input stream that will return an input stream okay so in uh, next session we will see what are java io package that time we will try to understand what are these input streams and output streams okay so this stream, this is nothing but an it returns an input stream attached to an output stream so the stream is nothing but a sequence of characters that is uh, uh, that we can capture and try to print it or uh, print it to the console or uh, to some other uh, redirect it to some other uh, file okay uh, so to read from a stream for example uh, there is a stream of characters coming okay to read from the particular stream you use input streams and to write uh, you have a particular stream to write whatever the character sequence from that particular stream to some file you use output streams okay all those things you will see in our next session okay so that will make things easier and uh, sorry okay these are some of the important uh, abstract methods so that are defined in uh, process uh, class let us see an example of uh, process class let's discuss about uh, runtime and uh, uh, process builder first and then uh, let's see how to use process with respect to runtime as well as with respect to your uh, process builder okay this uh, this encapsulates uh, java runtime environment itself okay the runtime okay so objects cannot be instantiated okay directly we cannot instantiate an object but we can get it through a method called get runtime okay this is a static method so we can directly call on this uh, class itself runtime that get method get runtime will give you a process object which you can capture it in uh, uh, process uh, object itself okay so important methods are add shutdown hook uh, so what it does is when you uh, add uh, a particular thread to this particular uh, uh, process uh, whenever the process terminates the particular thread will be invoked and whatever the things that you need to do uh, after the process is terminated you can take care of those things with, rest, uh, with this particular thread okay and we have as mentioned we have a, a static method uh, no, not static this uh, normal method static uh, sorry normal method exec we can specify the program name okay so on runtime when you specify a program name that particular program will be executed and corresponding process object will be a program is nothing but your uh, process the process will be started and the corresponding object will be provided to you you can manage the process using this particular process object okay so if you want to exit uh, the program you can exit and uh, you can specify the exit code for uh, this program this will specify the available free space for the for jvm okay so as i mentioned get runtime will give you uh, the runtime uh, object okay and the load if you want to specify a dynamic library you can specify the full path with file name to load while running this particular to the java runtime system and this will give you uh, total memory okay so there are other methods also you can see here process we have uh, different methods so you can see here okay all these things are abstract methods okay so you have destroy exit value get error string get input string get output string So is there, Tavita is asking you a question, is there any specific numbers for exit code? You can look it up. Uh, usually what, uh, there may be n number of uh, codes for uh, different exceptions or different errors, okay? But you check whether that uh, process executed successfully or the process had any issue just by two conditions. One is uh, if the process exit, if the process uh, 
execute successfully and complete it will return zero always it is like that only zero okay any exit code other than zero if some error has happened for example one some error has happened and uh, you have to identify what exactly has happened okay okay there will be n number of exit codes okay can't uh, okay uh, okay it's not there so the, the only way i mean in the sense like uh, to decide whether uh, uh, extract the process okay we can search with one particular thing uh, yeah some and you can search online so let us not uh, worry about that one you can search online okay now yeah, that is not a uh, i mean big thing uh, at all each uh, ex exit i mean the, for anything that is greater than zero right that is a error code so for each error code uh, I, I mean it, they may be different for uh, uh, there will be n number of error codes for each thing, uh, the error may be different. Okay, it is all these things are uh, related to your. Uh, I mean, if you see whatever uh, the Java things that are done right, if you see if you if you have a work experience with Linux or Unix, right, they are all similar to. I mean, uh, you, uh, all simulate whatever is there for your uh, Unix system. Okay, so let us see an uh, example of. Uh, process it should use only in exceptions it again depends on uh, like uh, what you are doing okay so if, if you see some program some uh, methods right sorry some methods here so legal threat state exception of uh, should used only in exceptions so I did not get Kavita uh, sorry I, I did not see that you have raised your hand yeah you can go ahead there, Kavita please ask your question no I, so I just want, want to ask like that exit code or exit value these things should be used in exceptions or it should be used in I mean just like to put any logic there and use it no, 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 no. So what I'm telling you, so your process is running, okay, it terminates, okay. So if you want to see whether that particular process is completed successfully or terminated normally as it should terminate, uh, you can check with this exit value, okay. So once the process terminates, you can get the exit value of that particular process and then you can check whether it is equal to zero or if it is greater than zero or something like that, okay. Did it answer your question? Yeah, yeah. No, no. If you have, if you have any question, please let me know. Uh, so usually that is what is done. Uh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I just wanted to know like where we can use this code like in uh, Java. Okay. That's yes. what uh, I, I wanted to. Use. Okay. I mean, we'll there are that. some okay. uh, like uh, you said, like in uh, input streams, they are used in I/O and these things, right? So, mm -hmm. like, oh, where this method can be used? That that's what I wanted to. Okay, talk about. we will see. Okay. We will see. Okay, we will see okay. the next okay. example. Okay. Okay. So let us go to that example. Okay, so here what are we trying to do? Uh, we, uh, as you know, we uh, we first what we need to do is we need to get uh, the runtime object that we can get it using the static method get runtime. Okay, and then uh, you define a particular uh, process object, and then on runtime object you can execute whatever you want, whatever the command you want to execute, you can execute, provided you have uh, right uh, amount of, uh, right permissions to execute the program. Okay, when I try to write, uh, run this program, 
it was not running, it was showing some error, okay. I will show you now. Okay. Okay, Kavita. So let us see. Let us see. What is it? Process has not exited. Okay, that is not in, uh, that is not getting invoked. Okay, that is why it is, uh, and I'm not able to see. I, uh, let me check. So it, is, it has not started. Let's not worry too much about it. Okay. So let us come in there. So I tried it, but it did not work. We'll see why it did not work. Okay. We can directly uh, give the full path and try to execute a particular executable. Okay. So I try to execute this uh, Chrome. Okay. From my uh, this one, I have given the complete path here. So let us run this and see what exactly is the exit value. Okay, let us see. Uh, okay, so let us see here. Here, uh, this will also return an exit value. Let us see whether uh, what we will get it. Okay, the available we will see all these things. Okay, so whenever you you attach a uh, stream into stream to uh, some other stream, the number of characters that are available for reading, right? That is provided by uh, this method. We can invoke this method on any stream, the input stream, and we can see whether there are any uh, uh, characters to be read or uh, bytes to be read. Okay, there are different. Uh, uh, here it is a byte because it is input stream. For characters, we have uh, readers and the writers. Okay, so we will see in our next class how, how what does all those things mean. Okay, so let us execute. This also is giving some error. The system cannot find file specified. Okay, let us see whether we have it or not. It is there. Oh, it became old. Okay, so this is opened, okay? This one opened. This one is opened with this particular process. Okay, process has not exited. Okay, this is the method okay. So that invoked uh, uh, the Chrome and then still it did not. Uh, so in such cases, right, we can use the uh, exit value to also start exit.
So here it, here, uh, it is showing. So this wait for, right? That will also return on uh, exit value. If you see here, uh, it returns see, it returns exit value for the sub process. Okay, that is the exit value for our uh, uh, this one. What is that? Our uh, Chrome. Okay, when we uh, close it, it returned. Uh, it, we closed it normally, right? So it returned zero. So that is uh, in such places you can use this uh, exit value. But I'm not sure why this one. Uh, Okay, so you can see here the exit value, whatever the uh, value that we have provided here, right? So we uh, once we completed it, and once we closed it, it shows exit. Okay. So assume that you are working on some application uh, which requires these kinds of invoking these kinds of processes, okay, some processes and all those things. In such cases, to check whether uh, uh, the process is, for example. Uh, I was uh, talking about one of the application, right, wherein uh, you invoke um, the messages and all. Messages and all will be coming, and uh, you invoke one particular process which will be listening to one particular uh, queue, okay? It is related to a concept called the JMS, Java Messaging Service, okay? So uh, for such kind of processes, you can uh, kind of like, uh, start using uh, one of uh, the Java program or something like that, and then that will be kind of waiting for the messages. If something happens and if it terminates, if it terminates abnormally, that time it will uh, give you an exit, or you yourself can uh, give, uh, provide an exit, like uh, how I provided here. So while, uh, there was that. Okay, so like this. You can give uh, your own, uh, this one, what is that, exit code. That will be captured by this uh, method, and that will be displayed for each different conditions, right? Say, for example, your uh, uh, system will go down. So, such uh, for such situations, you can give one particular uh, error code. Okay? If there is, uh, for example, you can define your own error code. For example, you are running this particular program, and there is one particular uh, exception, illegal state exception, which we saw just now. For that illegal state exception, you can provide one particular uh, exit code. That uh, using that one, you can identify that is this is a legal state exception. Uh, if at all something uh, happens, for example, we try to run this program, okay? So it, it was not a, we were not able to run this particular program. In such case, you can you your, you can you yourself yourself can define some uh, exit codes and uh, throw that or uh, set that exit code in uh, methods like this and capture those uh, exit code with the methods like this, okay? And uh, you can display when the, when something abnormal abnormally something happens with the error code that you see right based on that one you can uh, identify what exactly error has happened. Okay, in such scenarios you can use uh, these kinds of methods. Okay, so let's move on. So similarly, what we have uh, uh, what we can do with the runtime, we can do uh, similar things with the process, but it will give more control over. Uh, uh, the process, whatever you can do with the process, okay? Another way to start, the method to start uh, in this case is uh, start method. Okay, the method to start is start method, okay? So constructor is, sorry, the constructor is build up, you can pass whatever the arguments that you want to pass, environment variables, okay? or a string, this is your uh, variable argument, okay, this is your variable args, uh, till now we haven't discussed this, so string means, three dots means, uh, the variable arguments are uh, defined with the three dots, one, two, three, so string, there are some uh, some rules for uh, using, using this uh, uh, Variable argument, okay. This is your data type, and uh, this is your three dots. One, two, three dots. Okay. It means you can pass any number of uh, strings to to this particular method or constructor. So it will take variable arguments, okay. Variable arguments. It will take. We will discuss in our next class uh, uh, about uh, this variable arguments, okay. Select so us move on. 
So I have one simple program for the process builder. Let us try a different one this time. So it has opened uh, this new tag, uh, I mean notepad, and then it is asking, do you want to create a new file? If you say yes, the new, whatever the value that you have specified uh, uh, in this, right, here, right, that uh, file will be named with that name, okay, new file, whatever the file name you have specified, right, that is shown here, okay. So start method has uh, started this uh, notepad, okay, and close it. So definitely there should be an exit value when you close it. So let us see. Okay, when you close it, you'll get that exit value. Okay, it'll wait till uh, the process is exited and then it'll print the exit value. Okay, so you see, so when I close this, it will throw zero. Otherwise, wait for it and uh, for dot. Okay, here we don't have. Oh. Okay, here we don't have anything to explicitly set the exit uh, code. Okay, so that is what about. Uh, Power Builder, I um, mean Process Builder. So let us see. What are the available methods? Okay. Uh, there are so many things. Static class, Power Builder, Redirect. That's a subclass of, uh, not subclass, uh, nested class. Okay. Mm, command, you can specify the command here. Whatever the command you want to specify, you can uh, list, you can, uh, it returns a list of uh, some program and arguments, and then uh, you can specify whatever the command that you want to run with this uh, list. Okay, so this will uh, return a file object. We will see in IO, we will see what is that file object, okay, and then uh, so Power Builder, where exactly that uh, particular program is running, uh, it will give the directory. If it is running in the same directory, it is running from the same directory, it will give null. 
Okay, you can specify a directory here and environment. This will give you a map view of your uh, process builder's environment. For example, uh, you have process environment. Okay, so if you try to print this value, it will give uh, give whatever the environment that is being used. Okay, the environment variables. Okay, these are the environment variables that are being used. Okay, so if you see here, so these are all the environment variables which is using. Okay, so I thought it is 16. The current directory is null because it is uh, running from the same directory. So this is duplicated. So I try to print. So these are all the environment variable it is, uh, which is being used by that particular process. Okay. Okay. So there is one more important class which we've been using uh, without knowing what exactly that particular class is. Okay. So can anyone tell me what is that uh, particular class? So uh, where are we using that class? System class, right? System class. So this is a class which has a collection of static methods and variables. So we have input, output, and uh, error right error output for Java runtime system they are represented using our in out and Java variables so that is why we use the system dot out dot print line and the print yeah correct here yeah you told it is your print that is true correct so they are all nothing but uh, uh, streams okay let us see in uh, API itself system this is another important method I mean the class. So here you have uh, these fields, static fields. That is why we were able to use uh, system dot that is why we were able to use uh, system dot out. Okay. Similarly you can use uh, system dot error and system dot in to read from input to write to an output device that is your console this is also an output device that is your console okay these are print strings and this is an in input string okay so whatever we type from our uh, uh, keyboard that will be read and uh, you, you, whatever you want to do you can do those things okay see those uh, values mm -hmm. apart from those we have a lot of other methods so array copy, so it copies uh, from specific array to source array to destination array, specified position, and it, this will give console. We've used uh, console for uh, uh, reading input from uh, console, right, in uh, one of our, uh, sorry, one of our previous uh, uh, sessions. So this will give you, uh, this will run a garbage collector. So garbage collector is nothing but uh, in uh, C, C++, there is a concept called uh, uh, we know what are the what does the constructor do, right? Uh, that is, it creates an object. Whatever you want to do while creation, uh, creating an object, uh, for example, initializing that object, we can do it using constructors. But in C++, there is a concept called a destroy. The, the similar to constructors, there is a, some, uh, something called a dest uh, destructors. Okay. What does they do is the moment a particular object goes out of a scope. For example, you have defined one particular object uh, within a method. Uh, the moment you come out of that method, that particular object will be destroyed using uh, the destroy method. Okay. Uh, in uh, while creating an object, you call a constructor. Okay, by passing whatever the method, whatever the argue, arguments that you pass. Uh, so you create that using constructor. In C++, so that will be destroyed by by implicitly calling uh, the destroy method. Okay, you may not have to call that. 
if you provide the desktop method uh, and if you uh, define what exactly needs to be done uh, while uh, when the particular object goes out of scope what needs to be done if you provide that uh, within that uh, desktop method that will be taken care for example you assign some memory uh, uh, you allocate some memory for some objects for using uh, and once you once that is used and left okay so that memory has to be reclaimed back for using it okay so such kind of method you can uh, such kind of logic you can put it in your uh, destroy methods okay are uh, not exactly methods they are similar to constructors but they will be called when uh, uh, an obje object goes out of scope okay so similarly we don't have such concept in uh, java okay so he, in C++ what we are doing, we are manually trying to uh, reclaim whatever the memory that we, we used it, okay, that we are doing it manually. But in Java, we, uh, it is not our high date. That will be taken care by the system itself, Java, Java runtime system itself. That is taken care by what is known as the garbage collection or the garbage collector, okay. So that will, uh, you cannot uh, uh, run that garbage uh, collected on your own, okay. That will be taken care by Java runtime system. Here this is for your uh, class, I guess, okay. Extend effort towards recycling unused objects. So this will, when control returns, So whenever the garbage collector runs, so say for example you have uh, some hundreds of uh, objects. Uh, now uh, we are not using those objects. Okay, they are lying uh, in the memory uh, without being used in your application. Okay, uh, periodically Java runtime system will invoke this uh, garbage collector. That is when it sees whatever the objects that are not being used, it will. Uh, uh, destroy those objects and reclaim whatever the memory that is being used by those uh, Java objects. Okay, that is what is the functionality of uh, uh, garbage collectors. Okay, so the another important class is the math class. Whatever you want to do with uh, whatever you do with uh, your maths, right? For example, any anything that you think of in maths, you can do it. Uh, you have corresponding method in uh, math class. So you can use math class for uh, such purposes, okay? So exponent and then pi value is defined. So absolute, absolute of double float into whatever it is. The name is same. They're all overloaded with different arguments, okay? So uh, notice that all of the static methods, seal, return cube root of a double value, okay, tangent of a value, uh, asynchronous cosine, uh, sine cosine, all those things. Whatever you want to do, you can do with these uh, methods, okay, maximum value, minimum value, next after, next up, power. Okay, random value, if you want math that random, it will give you a random value. Okay, sign, hyperbolic sign, whatnot. Okay, so you can use all, you can try all these methods whenever time permits. And if you have any issues or if you have any, uh, if you have any doubts or if you need any clarification on any of the methods, please let me know, we will discuss, okay? So please uh, send me an email if you have any, uh, uh, doubts or if you need any clarification on any of these things after trying, okay, we will, uh, I will reply to those emails. So intuition. So the idea is uh,
Okay, okay. Intuition, uh, that Java taking that uh, at the rate gmail.com. Okay, so I am done with this session. So if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead. Otherwise, we can uh, conclude the session. Okay. Anyone has any question? Anyone need any clarification? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let us uh, wind up this uh, call. Uh, we'll meet tomorrow at uh, probably at 8:30. Otherwise, we'll meet at uh, 9 o'clock, and uh, we will go over uh, I/O package. Okay. Input output package. Yeah, thanks everyone. Have a, have a great evening.